My name is Zach Buckle, and I run a half acre vegetable farm that's projected to produce $100,000 worth of vegetables this year. And I don't actually like gardening. I used to love it, and I still love certain parts of growing vegetables, but I spend 40 hours of my week growing vegetables for other people. So when it comes to gardening, having a smaller space in my backyard where I get to grow whatever I want, my passion is just not what it used to be. So I don't really like spending a lot of time watering, weeding, planting, seeding, doing the whole romantic aspect of gardening that people talk about. So because of my lifestyle right now, I try to automate as much as possible and spend as little time in the garden as possible because really when it comes down to it, all I want to do is eat delicious vegetables that I grew myself and be around pretty plants as much as possible. I don't want to deal with all the maintenance and work involved in creating that stuff. This season, I spent very little time in the garden basically because I had to spend very little time in the garden because I originally planned on turning this very bed into a food factory to make all sorts of fun videos explaining gardening techniques that are very similar to my farming techniques. Uh, but the reality is I had almost no employees from March through July. Um, I didn't really get employees in, on the farm until about mid-July, and that's a whole long story, but I was exhausted. I just didn't have the energy to come in here and lift a finger. I, even looking at a plant growing was depressing to me because I had so many other fires to put out on the farm, um, especially any kind of weeds or anything like that because, honestly, the weeds in here are nothing compared to what I was dealing with on the farm. I had literally whole beds full of dandelions I was digging out. And my back was killing me. I was literally bedridden uh, for days um, just because I was doing all the work myself. And that just kills a lot of your motivation for doing this kind of stuff. But the cool thing is I sort of took track of what was actually in this bed a couple weeks ago. And there's still 36 pounds of food that came out of this bed and I didn't do anything. My mom came out here and watered once a week for about two hours using this sprinkler, this wobbler sprinkler, and might have pulled a few weeds here and there. But other than that, there's nothing that happened. And this bed's a disaster, to be honest. There's so many things that went wrong here. I planted it. I spent about 20 minutes planting it in June and then I just forgot about it because I just didn't have time and or motivation. And so this was supposed to be filled with carrots right now and turnips and there's nothing, but all of the stuff that I planted in here, like this kale, the broccoli, cauliflower still has a bunch of weight right there. And there's celery and uh, green onions and stuff behind me. There's still a truckload of food. There's actually probably a lot more than 36 pounds in here. And I did a video explaining what I mean by 36 pounds, but I mean, I basically spent an hour of my time this whole season managing this bed and that's what happened. I think that's a pretty good result. Um, and that all comes down to the style of gardening that I teach in my gardening course, link in the description on that. But it just actually turned out to be really cool because it proves how little effort you need to put into a garden to really produce a lot of food. You just gotta set it up right and use a couple of fun tools and gadgets that I'm gonna go over in this video. So one of the reasons why I was able to spend zero time in the garden and still get a good result was because my mom was watering every week. But if I didn't have my mom, this could do the same thing. This is the Rainpoint two zone automatic water timer, battery operated. And this could basically do the same thing as what my mom did. I just got this thing and I set it up and I didn't even look at the manual and I figured out how to use it in about five minutes, which is actually a big deal because I've used 
much fancier water timers on the farm. I am using much fancier ones on the farm and it takes me about a half an hour to figure out how to use them because they're much more complicated watering schedules and stuff and I had to read the manual on those. This is amazing because all I had to do is figure out how all these buttons work and it's real simple. There's two zones you could use on this. Um, I'm only using one because I don't have drip irrigation set up here, but so this is set up just for our wobbler sprinkler. But I set this for um, two hours once a week, and it's very easy to do this. Um, like I said, I didn't even use the manual, but you could set it to uh, two different zones. So said you hit, say if you had uh, drip tape along flowers next door, you could set those onto a different time, and I'm not going to go over the gory details on how to do this. They have great stuff on their website um, and how to set it up, but it's very easy. I mean, uh, compared to the one I use on the farm, it is light years easier. And they actually come with um, Teflon tape to uh, make your seal leak proof, which is a big deal. I love using Teflon tape on the farm for all of my plumbing. I pretty much end up using that more often than not on all of my fittings because especially with plastic fittings because plastic fittings generally fail and have terrible leaking problems so including teflon tape is a big deal um i actually had to switch to a brass fitting for the fancy water timer i use on the farm so it's nice to have that teflon tape and uh the bottom line is with this tool is you can walk away from the farm for a long time and by farm, I mean your backyard farm, a.k.a. a garden. Uh, I use farm and garden pretty much interchangeably. Um, English is a funny language, but uh, it's a constantly evolving language. But anyway, the cool thing about this is you could set it and forget it. And with all things like that, you know, it, you, you take that with a grain of salt. You're still going to need to check the batteries and stuff. All this takes is two triple a batteries i'm sure you're going to need to check those every once in a while but bottom line is you could set it and forget it and not have to worry about watering because if i was to hand water this garden it takes about 20 minutes to a half an hour of my time and you know my time is pretty valuable right now in my life if you've got a family with kids 20 minutes half an hour a week could be a lot so this saves that time for you and it does it right the thing i love about watering with the sprinkler is when you set up a wobbler sprinkler like we have in the garden it waters so evenly but it takes a long time you can't do that you know watering by hand you almost never do it right because you don't want to sit there for 20 minutes on one plant to make sure that water seeps in deep in the ground you know the best way to water is to water very deeply and infrequently and so this allows it to happen really really easily because even when you do it manually, if you do it for two hours, you got to come out here, turn it on, come out here and turn it off. That's two times you got to walk out here. And if your garden is, you know, 300 yards away from your house, that's kind of annoying. And the easier it is for you to water, the more likely you are to do it. And so a rain point water timer like this is a really simple way to make that happen. Um, it's something that you got to have in your garden tool arsenal is a water timer and this one's really really simple you can turn off one zone like i have because i don't want to use both zones all you got to do is set it up so you say i this is zone one i wanted to select that and i set it to 12 a.m but zero minutes and that means it won't run at all because i don't want this to just leak out water so you could set it up to just run one length of hose um, which is what I'm doing. And, uh, but if you wanted to run two, you can. And, you know, like I said, it's super easy to set up. I just, the, the, you just use on off. If you want to turn it off, you can just switch it to off. And then if you wanted to just turn it to manual, you could hold this down and say you were here and you wanted to water for like a half an hour just to germinate some stuff in, you could hold this down and set it to 30 minutes and then, you know, walk away and then deal with it tomorrow or something. There's all sorts of cool things you could do with this um, once you get good at watering in general, but uh, that will save you time because even if you think it takes 
30 seconds to come out here and, and turn this on. If you're doing that, you know, more than twice a week, that's something that you got to check off your list every time, uh, you know, throughout your week. And it adds a little bit of pressure to your life. You know, I have four farm hydrants that I'm managing on the farm to keep all the greenhouses watered. So I love having water timers because it gives me peace of mind. I don't have to think about two of them at least. You know, it, it really saves me a lot of mental effort. And this does the same thing for your garden. So definitely look into it. There's a link in the description where you can buy these. And I highly recommend you get a water timer. And honestly, the number one way that this thing is going to shine for you in your garden is if you have drip irrigation set up. That's how I use water timers on my farm is because... I'm watering things like tomatoes and cucumbers every single day for a certain time period. And that's where this is going to shine. You do not want to be out turning a farm hydrant on once a day for 45 minutes on and off. It's going to drive you crazy. And if you are growing a large amount of tomatoes and cucumbers in your garden, you're probably going to want to have drip irrigation set up because those don't like to get their leaves wet. So drip irrigation is a whole rabbit hole and it is somewhat complicated to set up it's not complicated but you do kind of have to know what you're doing because there's a lot of water pressure gallons per minute kind of stuff to be aware of at least but um i do go over that in my gardening course by the way uh but the actual timer is really going to be a game changer for you because it's going to control um how much water you put on the ground per day like for example i'm watering my tomatoes, the, it's the end of the season, so I'm watering them very little, but I'm still watering them 45 minutes a day in my greenhouse, and I have a, a water timer for those, and it just saves me a lot of stress, and I could also set it to go off in the morning, like way before I even get to the farm. Literally, you can water your garden or your farm while you sleep, and that's sort of a game changer because um, you can come out and do all of your, the gardening stuff you need to do and the garden's already watered. It doesn't like, you don't have to worry about getting sprinkled on while you're working in there. That's really not a problem in a garden, but in the farm, it, it does matter because we have a lot of work to do in a greenhouse or something while it's getting watered. Um, so it's nice to have that checked off the list before the day even really starts for us. But same thing goes for gardening. Everything pretty much likes getting watered while direct sun is not on it. So it's a big benefit to just have it done while you're sleeping. And having it automated on a daily basis for those kinds of crops gives you a much higher quality cucumber or tomato. Um, most tomato splitting issues happen because tomatoes are not getting watered evenly. So they'll get like one inch of water one day and half an inch the next day. And that's where the splitting will happen. And then same with cucumbers getting bitter. They get bitter usually because the water is not even. So if you have a way to get that water even on them, and you live in a climate where there's not a ton of rainfall, you could really take advantage of a, of a water timer like this. And it's just going to save you a lot of headache and give you a much higher quality product, basically. <sighs> so gadgets are great and all, and I love gadgets. I love tools. I use a lot of them on the farm and in the garden, but they all can fail. So I rely on them all with a grain of salt. You know, when I first started farming, I got all excited about the gadgets because I'm like, oh, it's going to make my life so much easier. All my stress is gone. It's all automated. I don't have to worry about anything. And then I got a faucet that automatically shuts off when the water level gets above a certain level. And it failed like one out of five times and it turns into a... Uh, a flood of water in my wash pack building, which is not really designed for the floor to get wet. That's happened like 20 times now. And that's just one example. All sorts of stuff like this fails. Automated vents, automated fans, tools break. You know, um, that's why I generally like using hand tools at, on the farm as much as possible as opposed to big mechanical tools or uh, gas powered tools and stuff but all of these things can fail and so even with a water timer like this 
no matter where it's coming from, you know, there's moving parts involved. So you can't just rely on it forever. You know, you got to pay attention to it sometimes. These things, they save you a lot of time and headache like over time, but there are points where they can fail. So you just got to take into account if this thing fails, is it going to be the end of the world for you? You know, probably not. Uh, like if you, if this thing doesn't turn on or something, most likely you're going to be fine. It's, unless you're like germinating a whole bed of carrots or something, uh, and you need it to come on every single day for 10 days and it fails. That's a problem. Sure. But just take that into account when you set these kinds of automations up and tools of any kind, because they all fail, you know, all farm tools fail at some point. So you can't just be in that uh, naive state of mind that I was when I first started farming and assume that it's all going to be fine and dandy forever. You know, there's, there's, you still need to pay attention to them and check on them every once in a while, you know? So I check the battery level on my water timers, you know, once every couple of weeks, just to keep an eye on them, you know, stuff like scales. I keep the, keep an eye on the battery levels because if something like that fails for me, it's a big deal, um, on a farm, but for this, it's not really that big a deal, but it's just something to be aware of. You know, you need to be mindful of all your tools and maintain them a little bit, but it's easier to maintain a tool like this than maintaining a garden watering schedule by hand every day or doing it by hand or whatever. So um, just think of it that way. It is ultimately saving you a ton of time and headache and making your life easier. It just requires less maintenance, but it still requires maintenance. So if you're interested in setting up a garden like this, where it takes very little time to manage and can still produce you the kind of results I talked about at the beginning of this video, I've got a free garden starting guide in the description where I go over how to set up a garden like this in four simple steps and give you the bare bones necessary to build a garden like this because it's not hard and it's a free microsoft word document you can download save it and i have links to some of the things you'll need to buy to make it happen and i highly recommend you check that out and if you like this video please subscribe give it a like share with anybody you think would like it and I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you in the next.